Hello everyone, I am Francesca Sahagun and together with my groupmates, Edzar Navarro and Patricia Palad, we will present to you Frederick Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil. Before discussing the concepts and ideas examined in the book, let us first introduce to you Frederick Nietzsche. So Nietzsche was born into a puritanical religious family. Ironically, he became one of the most influential and outspoken critics of Christianity and morality. Also, many have called him the philosopher with a hammer. With this hammer, he destroys the philosophies of the past by exposing yung mga biases and assumptions that exist sa mga eyot. Despite not getting recognition during his lifetime, he was a prolific writer. He was able to produce numerous works including Thus Spoke Zarathustra on the genealogy of morals, the Antichrist, and the will to power. I suppose you have heard or have read some of his lines, such as What doesn't kill me makes me stronger, and God is dead, and we have killed him. Lastly, with his works, he has influenced numerous notable individuals, such as Thomas Mann and Sigmund Freud. Now that we know some things about Nietzsche, let's discuss his work. So I'd like to bring to your attention that the full title of his work is Beyond Good and Evil, Prelude to a Philosophy of the Future. The book was published in 1886 and it serves as an introduction to his future works. To gain further understanding of the title, let me read and explain to you yung sinabing ni Walter Kaufman, a German-American philosopher and poet and a renowned translator of Nietzsche. The whole book represents an effort to rise beyond simple-minded agreement and disagreement, beyond the vulgar faith and antithetic values, beyond good and evil. The point of the title is not that the author considers himself beyond good and evil in the crudest sense, but it is in part that he is beyond saying such silly things as the Jews are good or the Jews are evil, or free spirits, or scholars, or virtues, or honesty, or humaneness are good or evil. Everywhere, he introduces distinctions, etching first one type and then another, both generally confounded under a single label. He asks us to shift perspectives or to perceive hues and gradations instead of simple black and white. This has led superficial readers to suppose that he contradicts himself or that he never embraces any meaningful conclusions. But this book abounds in conclusions. So simply, Nietzsche rejects the dichotomy between things, the binary mode of thinking. Ang sinasabi niya is that, we should go beyond good and evil, beyond appearance and reality, beyond will and reason, beyond true and false, and so on. In this book, he tackles a wide range of important ideas and concepts and asks us to create the philosophy of the future. So, according to Nietzsche, karamihan daw sa mga philosophers ay naniniwala na they are totally objective and free of assumptions biases, and prejudices when they're searching for the truth. Isa sa mga philosophers na inexpose niya is Rene Descartes and the statement na I think, therefore I am. So dito, siguradong sigurado si Descartes, pero sabi ni Nietzsche na De Descartes already assumes na merong I, pero, is, pero itong singular I na nag-iisip, hindi pa talaga napapatunayan ng husto ni Descartes. Marami pang na-uncover na philosophical assumptions and assumptions and prejudices in Nietzsche. And sinasabi niya na most of these arise from the assumption na the truth is preferable to falsehood. Pero sabi nga niya na no point of view can comprehend the absolute truth, na meron lang iba't ibang perspectives. So dahil dito, yung mga philosophies ng mga iba't ibang philosophers ay reflection lang nila, ng mga sarili nila. Hindi absolute truths na nahanap nila but reflection. And isa pa, sabi niya na most philosophers search for the truth to acquire power. They are motivated by the will to power, which will be further discussed later on. If you check the provided reading, you will see na it begins with Nietzsche asking for forgiveness. And for what? For discovering these two things. That all moral philosophy hitherto has been tedious and has belonged to the soporific appliances, 
and that virtue, in his opinion, has been more injured by the tediousness of its advocates than by anything else. Before explaining why, let me discuss morality and virtue first. So for Nietzsche, your morality, a matter of preference yan. So it would be immoral if not imposed ng isang universal morality sa bawat isa. As for virtues naman, sinasabi niya na lumalabas ito from our unconscious desires and inclinations and by looking at these, mas maiintindihan natin ang morality. So doon sa statement niya, he is simply expressing his opinion na utilitarians and other contemporary moral philosophers are boring and they cannot possibly pick the interest of the general public with the topic of morality. So if you take the time to read the paragraph presented on the screen, you will see na sinasabi ni Nietzsche na yung karamihan, hindi nila maisip, hindi nila maimagine na what is good for one is not good for all. Na merong order of rank between man and man, between morality and morality. So for instance, yung mga tao na nasa lower rank, they have virtues like meekness and obedience. Pero itong mga virtues na to, hindi siya akma. Hindi siya naayon para sa mga tao na nasa higher rank. Kasi usually, sila yung mga nasusunod. Sila yung nagbibigay ng orders and such. And it, w- it will only hurt them if pinilit na dapat maging meek and obedient sila. Therefore, it is immoral to say that what is good for one is good for another. Sa first part ng reading ay diniskas ni Nietzsche ang chapter 9 ng Beyond Good and Evil na pinamagatang What is Noble. Dito, diniskas niya una ang origin of aristocracy kung saan malalaman natin ang sinasabi niyang distinction of rank between man and man, ikalawa, ang master morality at slave morality na patungkol naman sa distinction of rank between morality and morality, at ikatlo, ang life denial kung saan tinutulan niya ang will to life ni Schopenhauer. Ayon kay Nietzsche, importante ang aristocratic caste sa pagbibigay ng karangalan sa mga tao. Ang caste na ito ay nagagamit upang malaman ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng rank ng mga tao at ito rin ang nagdi-differentiate ng great humans mula sa mga commoners. Dahil rin dito, hindi na iiwasan ang pagkakaroon ng slavery. Sinasabi rin ni Nietzsche na ang mga kabilang sa pinakamataas na ranggo ay ang kahulugan at end goal ng kanilang lipunan. Nabanggit din ni Nietzsche kung paanong nagmula ang higher civilization. Sinabi niya na ang nananaig ay ang may mas malakas na will o desire for power. Sa madaling salita, ang superioridad ng nasa noble caste o yung may mga pinakamataas na ranggo ay hindi binubuo ng kanilang pisikal na kapangyarihan Bagkus, ito ay binubuo ng kanilang mental na kapangyarihan. Sinabi ni Nietzsche na ang will to power ay precisely will to life. Bilang pagtutol sa claim ni Schopenhauer na will to life, kung saan sinabi ni Schopenhauer na self-preservation is the primary motivation of living beings, sinabi ni Nietzsche na living things seek to discharge its strength and that life itself is will to power. Sinasabi niya na ang self-preservation ay resulta lamang ng will to power. Ayon kay Nietzsche, life is will to power, and will to power is exploitation. He claims that all organic processes rely on some form of exploitation of the weaker by the stronger. For example, sa digestion, sinasabi na mas malakas ang will or desire for nourishment ng mga tao sa will or desire ng food to remain undigested. Nietzsche claims that it is foolish to try to eliminate this exploitation altogether. Nietzsche claims that there are only two basic types of morality, slave morality and master morality. These types of moralities were initially formed when society was actually made up of masters and slaves in a society where masters were completely free and slaves simply have to do whatever their master said. Nietzsche argues that these two types of people came up with two different types of morality. The masters see themselves as strong, healthy, and powerful or as good and look down upon the weak, poor, and happy slaves as bad. The slaves, on the other hand, come to see their oppressive masters as evil 
and develop the concept of good to describe themselves in contrast to these masters. For the master morality, whatever it is that is approved and desired by the master, or also called the noble man, was considered as good. Itinuturing ng noble man ang kanyang sarili bilang determiner of values. He does not require to be approved of, he passes the judgment. Siya lang ang nagbibigay ng worth sa mga bagay. Siya ay creator of values. Kaya naman, ang mga bagay na kanyang ginagawa, for example, the courage during battle, keeping power over slaves or nobility, ay masasabi lamang na good dahil ang mga ito ay approved at desired ng master. On the other hand, things that the master view as bad are the things deeds, and people that are lacking in some qualities he desires. Halimbawa, ang view ng master sa wealth and comfort ay good. Maaaring i-consider niya as bad ang poverty and discomfort. Isa pang halimbawa ay ang pag-consider ng master as good sa power, honor, at nobility, kaya naman maaari rin niyang i-consider as bad ang mga bagay, gawain, at tao na hindi nagtatangi ng mga nabanggit. For the slave morality, the slaves think of their masters as evil and that everything that their masters value is evil. Kung kanina sa master morality, consider as good yung power, honor, and nobility, dito naman sa slave morality, consider nila ito as evil. Not because that power, honor, and nobility are evil, but because the masters value those characteristics. Para naman sa mga slave, evil is the opposite of goodness. Slaves are the opposite of the masters, and the masters are evil, therefore it must be good to be a slave. Sa madaling salita, ang iniisip ng mga slave, kung ang masters ay evil, at kabaliktaran naman ng evil ay good, at sila ang kabaliktaran ng masters, malabang ay good ang pagiging slave, at moral goodness means being a good slave. Halimbawa, ang isang good slave ay humble. Ibig sabihin, it must be morally good to be humble. Isa pang halimbawa ay ang good slave ay sumusunod sa utos ng master ng walang katanungan o tinatawag na blind obedience. Therefore, blind obedience is considered morally good. Nietzsche claims that slave morality is essentially the morality of utility. As mentioned earlier, ito palang popular statement na to ay galing kay Nietzsche. God is dead. Sa statement pa lang ito, alam mo agad kung gano'n ka-controversial si Nietzsche. And the statement is just the tip of the iceberg sa pagtingin niya sa Christianity. Para sa kanya, denying God and denying responsibility in God is equal to saving the world. That Christianity is the most fatal and sinful lie to ever exist. And he urges people to declare open war with it. Simply put, Nietzsche says that Christians are weak. Sabi niya nga, they suffer from a kind of spiritual malady. At yun ay weakness. Ang premise ng Christianity is to care for humans kaya it pays attention to the majority who are sick and weak of spirit. Para kay Nietzsche, dahil doon, parang naging valuable ang suffering and weakness. At gaya na rin ang sinabi kanina sa slave morality and the same way for Christians, weakness and suffering ay considered good at yung health and strength ay considered evil. As you can see sa screen, this statement kind of summarizes Nietzsche's criticism sa deceptive facade ng Christianity sa pag-atin ng power. Ayun nga, kawalan ng power ay nag-push sa Christians to seek power by other means. By spiritual means, pero in the end, gusto rin nila ng power. Ibang uri lang ng power. At through Christian values of humility, self-denial, and even poverty, Nietzsche criticized Christians that they hold their morality to a really high standard. Ultimate morality na dapat isa buhay. The measure of all things, ika nga. Pero, as per Nietzsche's words, their morality is the most repugnant kind of degeneracy that civilization has brought into existence. Because, it is a morality of the weak for the weak. Bakit nga ba ito nasabi ni Nietzsche regarding Christianity? Let's go back to the time during the days of the Roman Empire where Christians and Jews were oppressed and powerless. Dahil nga, impossible na mag-succeed sila in taking worldly or earthly material power to cope 
they instead made a virtue out of their lack of power. So words pa nga ni Nietzsche, naingit daw yung Christian sa Roman power, kaya they want that kind of power for themselves. At hindi nila mahuwa, kaya nag-decide silang ibang uri ng power na lang kuhunan nila, a spiritual kind of power. Ang naging mantra ng Christians nun ay, what really matters is not this world, but the world beyond the afterlife. Sabi ni Nietzsche, the powerless in society cope with their lack of power by convincing themselves that earthly power is not worth it, or even that power is evil. Yung mga Christian values, humility, poverty, pity, and devotion to the spiritual world ay itinuturing na supreme good, and of course, there is only distrust towards the material and earthly power. Those who have no power in this life are convinced that they will have power in another life. What Nietzsche finds, quote, unquote, disgusting is the Christian's instinct to see this weakness or mediocrity as a goal worth pursuing. Pero, since no violent physical means are available, dahil very distinguished nga ang may power sa wala, sabi ni Nietzsche, the war must therefore be a spiritual war. Sa book, Nietzsche actually used the word recipe to enumerate how Christian morality is established, leading to a spiritual war. First, virtue is made the main feature of one's ideals. Kaya, the older ideal is denied and declared to be the reverse of all ideals. Sinasabi lang dito na the focus is only on one's own Christian virtues. Automatically disregarded na kung anumang values ng isang tao noon dahil considered yun na mali at opposing sa current Christian values or virtues na considered na tama. Second, one's own type is set up as a general standard and this is projected into all things as God. Parang since a person is upholding these virtues, this person I considered to be the measure of value in general. Parang role model siya na hindi impose to others sa kung anong klase ng tao dapat and yung core virtues or values na dapat meron ng isang tao under the name of God. Third, the opponents of one's ideal are declared to be the opponents of God. This simply says na opposing a person's Christian virtues or values means you oppose God and is an enemy of God. Kaya this gives the opposed person the power, as stated here, to curse and to bless. Fourth, all suffering, all gruesome, terrible, and fatal things are declared to be the results of opposition to one's ideal. This simply means deserve na mga taong nag oppose sa Christian virtues and kay God mismo kung anumang mangyaring masama sa kanila. Fifth, is to regard nature as the reverse of one's ideal, contempting all natural things. Kaya din morality of the weak for the weak ang tawag ni Nietzsche sa Christianity kasi nga, ang Christian view ay complete opposite ng natural state ng mundo. Lastly, the triumph of anti-naturalism and ideal castration, yun ngang triumph ng pure, good, sinless, and blessed sa mundo, ay itinuturing na end all be all, the finale, the great hope, and the coming of the kingdom of God. In the end, for Nietzsche, to make oneself abstract means to turn one's back on the world. Para sa kanya, Christianity persuades us na maging contento sa weakness na yon instead of growing. That we should try to overcome the sicknesses and weaknesses that Christianity rewards. Kasi sobrang dangerous ng nihilist thinking na yon or yung lack of positive faith. That's why, for us to not give up on life entirely, We need something to aim for, and Nietzsche encourages us to aim for greater things in life.